So, when someone has a lesion in the brain that looks like it is a primary brain tumor, uh, one of the first things we try to determine is it low grade or high grade. And we can't always determine that, but there are some features on the MRI that help us determine that. If it is a low grade lesion, sometimes we will have them undergo surgery to remove it, sometimes we just observe it. It depends on what the symptoms are and whether it's been growing over time or stable over time. If it is a high grade lesion, then the first step would be to attempt to remove it surgically if it's in a place in the brain that the surgeons feel they can operate on safely. So they will be as aggressive as they can with leaving the most minimal side effects after the surgery that they can. Uh, we often will do it, well, we always do a post-operative MRI. So the day after surgery, the surgeons will have the patient undergo an MRI, and that will help us determine whether all the tumor was removed, most of the tumor, or only some of the tumor. And that also helps guide our radiation treatments. Uh, High-grade lesions always receive radiation, whether they're removed partly, completely, or not at all, we always add radiation. So a question I get in my office all the time is if it's been removed, why do I need radiation? And the answer is, is that even though we uh, may see a certain area on the MRI, we know that there are microscopic cells that go beyond that area. So the surgeon is at somewhat of a disadvantage. They can't remove a large area surrounding the tumor because that's all important brain tissue and the brain is obviously a very important organ in our bodies, so they only remove what looks absolutely abnormal. And then even if the MRI looks normal, we know those microscopic cells are beyond that area. I always tell my patients, almost think of it as an octopus, where the surgeon has removed the body of the octopus, but the tentacles are microscopic and go beyond and into the brain tissue. So we add radiation to those areas because we know the brain can tolerate that radiation and we can treat those areas, try to kill those microscopic cells, whereas the surgeon can't just remove that area because that will leave too large of a side effect for the patient. Low-grade lesions are very different than high-grade lesions, uh, and the treatment is extremely individualized, and it's somewhat controversial in the literature. As I said before, sometimes we observe these patients, sometimes we do surgery alone, sometimes we do radiation, and a lot of that really depends on all the situations involved with that lesion and really goes beyond my ability to go into specific details today. So one of the important things about brain tumors is that it really requires a comprehensive team approach. And it's a team approach that involves many different disciplines. So it involves the neurosurgeon, it involves the radiation oncologist, it, it involves a neuro-oncologist which is a neurologist who also is trained in the delivery of chemotherapy and we have had dramatic improvements in the chemotherapy available for brain tumors. And it also involves neuroradiology, so the people who look at the scans and interpret whether this is a high grade lesion or, or low grade lesion based on the scan. And also neuro neuropathologists, the people who look at the cells under the microscope to help us determine what the diagnosis is. And it's this interaction of all these doctors that really helps us determine uh, or develop the best team approach to treating the patient. Here at Monmouth, we're, we have a neuro-oncology brain tumor conference where every two weeks now, all of these doctors are in one room and we go through many brain tumor patients' cases and we show the images, we show the pathology, we discuss the case and we try to come up with a comprehensive approach because all these disciplines are interacting more and more than they did in the past and that helps us elevate the quality of care for patients.